And so it's inductive, it's an inductive argument because it's based on probabilities, not on certainties. Uh, the other example I gave was Ben Roethlisberger is in great health. Uh, the Steelers always have a good season after a bad season, and last season was a bad one. Therefore, the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. Now, this is not uh, a, an argument based on definition or scientific laws or mathematical certainty. It is certainly a probabilistic argument, and as we'll note later, it's also a, a bad one, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully you get, to, uh, you get a sense of the difference between inductive and deductive arguments. Uh, let me give you one more example of a deductive argument. All field mice are rodents. All rodents are mammals, therefore all field mice are mammals. And you'll notice that this is in the form of a, a sort of a categorical logical form. All of this, all of that, some of this. These sorts of arguments are set up in such a way that we, the hearers, are supposed to, um, to feel like the conclusion follows necessarily, uh, like it's impossible for the conclusion to be false. Uh, and so this is a deductive argument as opposed to an inductive argument. All right, now what we have to do is turn our attention to testing arguments. We understand what the difference is between a deductive argument and an inductive argument, and now we need to be able to ask ourselves of any argument in front of us, is this a good one or not? Well, the way we do this is a simple two-step process. Well, at one level it's simple. It will get more complicated. Uh, the first thing we need to judge, in, whether it's a deductive argument or inductive, is the inferential claim. In other words, is the inference a good one? The second thing we need to judge is the truth or falsity of each of the premises. And we separate these two into two very distinct steps. We don't want to confuse the two. In the first step, we want to ask, what is, how is the logic of the argument? Is the logic of the argument good? Is that inferential claim a good one? And then a quite separate issue is whether or not the premises are true. Uh, so we have a parallel process uh, with regards to deductive arguments and inductive arguments, and, and this is what they look like. With regards to a deductive argument, step one, we must imagine or assume that the premises in the argument are true, and then ask ourselves if the conclusion also must be true. If this is the case, then the argument is valid. So we have to imagine or assume the premises are true, and we, we're going to see whether the conclusion follows necessarily. Uh, another way of putting this is we ask ourselves, can I think of any possible way that these premises could be true, but the conclusion still be false? If we can, this argument is not valid, it's invalid. But if there's no way for the conclusion to be false, I'm sorry, if there's, if there's no if there's, yeah, if there's no way for the conclusion to be false, given that the premises are true, then the argument is valid. Uh, so that's the first step. Step one is to determine whether or not the argument is valid. And then the second step is to ask, are the premises true? If the premises of a valid argument are true, then the argument is sound. Because a sound argument is just a valid argument with all true premises. So a sound argument is one that's valid, which means the inferential claim is a good one, and has all true premises. So with regards to deductive arguments, our first question is, is this a valid deductive argument? Then we want to ask, are the premises true? If it's valid with true premises, then the argument is a sound argument, or we would just say, it's a good one. Uh, let's turn, let's, let's go through this process, turn our attention to the two deductive arguments that we've addressed so far in this, in this talk. The first deductive argument is, first premise, Scott is unmarried. Second premise, Scott is a male. Third premise, a bachelor is an unmarried male. Conclusion, Scott is a bachelor. Now, the first thing we want to do is not ask, is it true? Is Scott really unmarried? Is he really a male? Is this a good definition? The first step is, is that inference a good one 
To do that, we have to assume or imagine that the premises are true and then ask ourselves, is there any way for that conclusion to be false if the premises are true? Or is it the case that it must be true? If it must be true, if the, if the premises are, are true, then it's a valid argument. In this case, we can see that this argument is indeed valid. Scott is unmarried. Scott is a male. A bachelor is an unmarried male. So just by definition, it must be the case that Scott is a bachelor. If an unmarried male is the definition of a bachelor, and Scott is both unmarried and male, then the argument um, is, uh, is valid. There's no way that those three premises could be true and the conclusion could be false. So this tells us the logic of this argument is, is nice, it's good, it's airtight. Uh, it's a good deductive inferential claim. So we know first, all right, the logic of the argument is good. So it's a valid argument. Now we will address the truth or falsehood of the premises. Um, now, who knows who Scott is? Um, I actually have a, a friend, a fellow professor at the college named Scott Caton. And so, if this argument is about Scott Caton, I can look at the argument and say, oh, this, uh, this, is, not a, um, this is not a sound argument. Because Scott is not unmarried. Scott Caton, my friend, is married. So the first premise is false. The second premise is true. Scott is a male. The third premise uh, is also true. A bachelor is defined as an unmarried male. Uh, and so this is an argument where the inferential claim is a good one, but it's not the case that all three premises are true. And since all of the premises are not true, this is an unsound argument. It is not sound. Again, in order for an argument to be sound, it's got to be a valid argument with all true premises. This argument is valid, which means the inferential claim is good, but one of the premises is false, and so this argument is unsound. Uh, there are two ways in which an argument can be unsound. One is it can be invalid. It's got, it's got to be valid with true premises to be sound, so if it's invalid, it's an unsound argument. The other way in which it can uh, become unsound is what happened to this poor argument. If one of the premises is false, then the argument is unsound. So with deductive arguments, the holy grail is the sound argument. This is one where the logic of the argument is uh, put together correctly, and the premises are all true, and it tells us something true about the world, and it's good reasoning, good evidence, and we celebrate it as a sound argument. Let me give you another example of this process with deductive arguments, and then we'll move on to inductive arguments. We looked at the argument that says, all field mice are rodents, all rodents are mammals, therefore all field mice are mammals. Uh, now this is a categorical style argument, um, and uh, the first step we want to do is the step of asking, is it valid? Is it the case that if we imagine that the premises are true, does, it ha does the conclusion also have to be true? And if you look at this argument, you'll realize that this is indeed a valid argument. If it is true that all field mice are rodents, and if it is true that all rodents are mammals, then it follows from this that all field mice are mammals. There's no way that, that it could be the case that the conclusion could be false as long as those first two premises are true. Now we go to the second step of analyzing this argument and we ask, are those premises true? And indeed they are. Uh, so all field mice are indeed rodents. And all rodents are indeed mammals. Uh, therefore, we've got an argument where the logic is locked tight, it's perfect, and the premises are true, and so here we have one, a sound argument, and this is what we hope to see all the time. Uh, certainly when we're arguing uh, and we're giving deductive arguments, this is the only kind that we really want to give. Um, so this, this is how we analyze deductive arguments through this two-step process. Now, it's, the, the process is exactly parallel for inductive arguments.